good news, bad news, uh, you, you, you can determine for yourself, but we are on our last Sabbath about talking about the Beatitudes, or the attitudes, as some have called them, in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think these, I'm sure, I hope you do also, but I think these are very important because they were spoken by Christ himself, giving us instructions on how to live our lives, what to do. I will admit that some of them seem kind of off a little bit when you first read them and see them because how does it make a great life with Christ? And the one we look at today is found in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10, the last one. And this is one of those that I look at and I think, what? Blessed are those who are persecuted. Do I need to say any more? Blessed when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Understand that. Persecution for righteousness' sake. Not just persecuted. There's lots of different persecutions going around the world. But those that are persecuted in this world for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I believe that if you will just stay with me for a while today and keep an open mind, that by the time we get to the end of this message that you're going to understand why it's blessed to be persecuted for righteousness sake and i may show you some ways that you never thought that you were persecuted before for christ but maybe you are being persecuted for him the apostle paul experienced much persecution in his ministry and in his life as a preacher of the gospel he was challenged in many ways but yet, in the book of 2 Timothy, he shares how he overcame these things in his life. He says, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ, Jesus, will suffer persecution. So in other words, he's telling us, if you desire to live a godly life with Jesus, you will have persecution in your life. But evil men and impostors will go worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been accused of, knowing from whom you have learned them. God never promises you and I that when we come to him and have a relationship with him and a life with him, he never promises that we're going to have an easy life. In fact, many places in the Bible, we're going to see it throughout today, that it's just the opposite is promised us. But yet the life of, of the believer is full of promises and blessings, even in the hard times. Why are God people persecuted? Sometimes saying you're a Christian, and I believe it in the world around us today more than any other time, if you say you are a Christian, you immediately intimidate people around you. It's maybe because the word Christian and Christianity has been used in the wrong way and for the wrong purposes. But when someone hears that we are a Christian, they often get intimidated and they lash out in ways of persecution. So we get persecuted simply because we have a new master. We have a new ruler in our life. <clears throat> Luke chapter 6, verse 22 through 23 says, Blessed are you when men hate you, when you are excluded. When you read these verses, these words in this verse, think about your life, okay? Think about your life. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, when they cast you out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day. Leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. How are we persecuted? Insult? Excluded from things? Excluded from conversations? Probably conversations you really didn't want to be mixed in with anyways. Being asked to do things on days where you know that you are to go to church and spend with God and you have to say, no, I can't do that, and they 
you're laughed at, sneered at, made fun of, why are you going to church? Your wife make you go to church? There are many ways that you and I are persecuted today in this world we live in. Some of you may not even think of it as persecution, so to speak. But I want to challenge you to open your eyes a little bit to things that are going on around you. Because there is blessings in recognizing that you are being persecuted for righteousness' sake. There are blessings. I would dare say that if you don't feel persecution in your life, maybe you need to look at your life a little bit harder. Maybe we are not living our life the way Christ wants us to live our lives. Maybe we're not standing up for him when we are to be standing up for him. Jesus went on to say this in Luke, verse 26. Woe to you when men speak well of you. For so did the fathers to the false prophets. Now, it takes a little bit of dissecting of these verses to really kind of make sense of them in your life and in our daily lives. This one we can look at and say, so when, I, when men praise me or lift me up, I got to be careful because even the false prophets were lifted up and praised? Yeah, that's what he's saying. Who is seeking the praise? Who is receiving the praise? For what reasons is praise being given? Is it for me or is it for God's glory? I am thankful that many times as people leave church or afterwards they, you know, they'll say, it was a good message today. Do I want that praise for myself or do I want it for God who has given me the message to share with you today and the words to share? To God be that glory if it speaks to you. True believers truly are persecuted in many different ways. One is physical persecution. The word means chasing, driving away, pursuing. It includes harassment, abuse, unjust treatment, including imprisonment or death. You think about the early believers, the apostles, the disciples themselves. Stephen was the first Christian that we have recorded as being murdered and martyred for his commitment to Christ. James, James, he was simply killed by the sword. Most of the apostles were killed in various ways. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded because of their belief of who Christ was. Now, when I look at that list, I will admit, I'm going to state the obvious now. Ready? I have never been beheaded. I have not been crucified upside down. I have not been stoned. Although I have used the words of the old child's deal, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. When I was younger, when I thought I was being persecuted by friends, by what they were saying to me. Persecution continues today in all shapes and forms. Persecution will continue until Christ returns and in greater forms than what we even experience today. There is verbal insults. Cast insults of abusive words, mocking us viciously sometimes. You know, to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and have verbal assaults thrown at us, it hurts. But think of Jesus. Jesus was spat on. Jesus was beaten. Jesus was taunted all the way to the cross. So faithfulness in Christ may cause some of us to be mocked, some of us to be insulted. But remember, you weren't the first one. There was one greater than us that was mocked and chastised than us. 
The godly lady was constantly harassed by her co-workers because of her Christian lifestyle. A deacon was persistently taunted by his supervisors for his Christian conduct and the way he conducted himself at work. A friend was forced to leave his job because he would not drink alcoholic beverages when they went out for office parties. These things are happening around us all the time, and we need to be aware if they are for righteousness' sake, they're being persecuted and blessed at the same time. Another way is false accusations. Insults are said to our faces. False accusations are usually said behind our backs. Those are the things that we hear later you know, in other places about things that we are accused of doing that probably we really did not do or we we're accused of doing that really weren't things that we had done correctly. Think of false accusations that have been passed around for years and years to the Christians. I have heard of Christians being accused of burning Rome, murdering children, cannibalism. Jesus was even accused behind his back of being a gluttonous man, of being a drunkard, of being a friend to tax collectors and eating with sinners of all things. If you don't want to be accused like Jesus of these things, that I would, I'm going to go down after church today and we have lunch downstairs. Okay? So if you don't want to be accused of eating with sinners, please just go home because I'm going to eat downstairs and if you eat with me, you could be accused of eating with a sinner because I'm there. The fact is, if you and I choose to live a Christian life, a life for Christ, we will, we are, and we will continue to be persecuted until his return. The hard fact is this. Maybe not today, maybe in some ways today you have been, but many times this persecution will come from other so-called Christians around us that we associate with. So what does the verse go on to say in Matthew? Continuing on in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for whose sake? We as Christians, when we stand up and we are persecuted, there is false persecutions against us personally, but there's true persecutions when it's against Christ. And that's what Christ is talking about here. Rejoice, be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward where? On this earth? No. Great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Persecution in this world today is nothing because our reward is greater in heaven and it's his promised reward that he comes to give us and share with us. So when we feel like we're down, we're beaten up, and we're being abused, and we're being taken advantage of, because we have our life in relationship with God, we get passed over for promotions at work. We miss out on in a sporting event that you know, we love to do because you know, we don't think it's right for us to do it. If we're doing it for right reasons, I shared with this with a couple of gentlemen earlier this morning. If I'm asked to go play golf on Sabbath and I say I can't play that day and I go on my merry way, I believe that I have sinned. If I'm asked to play golf on a Sabbath and I say I can't because it's the day I go to church, I believe I've honored God. Do you see the difference? It's subtle, but it's true, number one. And number two, what witness have I just dropped to them? 
Blessed are you when they revile and they persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you. How strange is it to rejoice and be glad? How can we truly rejoice when we are being persecuted? Rejoice because great is a reward in heaven. Early believers rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer with Christ. Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 5. Not only that, but also we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation, notice the progression here that Paul uses in these verses. I love this. But we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. Character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our lives by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Notice the progression there. Tribulation comes, but it can produce perseverance in our relationship with God in, in, in life. Perseverance develops a character. Doesn't God want to develop a right character within us? Don't we have a long ways to go in our character development and our relationship with God? And character produces hope. That hope that our reward is not on this earth, but our reward is in heaven. Our reward is full of promises and fulfillment in him and for him and through him in what he says. In these verses, Jesus gives us two reasons why believers can rejoice in the midst of persecution. The first one, believers can rejoice in persecution because they have a great reward in heaven. I hope you brought your Bible today because this is when you have to open them up. Some are on the screen, some are in your word. So open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Remember, believers can rejoice in persecution because they have great reward in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on this earth. Where is your treasures on this earth? What are your treasures on this earth? Car, job, home, family, material things, right? What happens to them? Where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither, not, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What is our promise? Our promise is that we lay up our treasures in heaven where Jesus is and what he, where he is. The second thing we learned from these verses is believers can rejoice in persecution because they are in great company. Do you think you're all alone? Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 to 40. We aren't the first to be persecuted. We won't be the last. Hebrews chapter 11, 32 to 40. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weaknesses were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial and mockings and scourgings, yes, of the chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of them, the world has not, was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts, 
and the mountains and the dens and the caves. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God had provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Let's go down the list. How persecuted are you? How bold are you, how proud are you to say that you are a child of God? No matter what the cost. Early godly leader in the 4th century church preached so strongly against sin that he offended the empress and many of the church leaders and officials of that day. He was summoned before the emperor. He was threatened with banishment if he did not cease his preaching. And he responded, Sire, you cannot banish me from the world is my father's house. Then I will slay you. Nay, but you cannot, for my life is hidden Christ in God. Your treasures will be confiscated. Sire, that cannot be either. My treasures are in heaven where none can break or steal. Then I'll drive you from men and you will have no friends left. Ah, that you cannot do either. For I have a friend in heaven who has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. With that, he was ban banished first to Armenia and then farther on near the Black Sea. He never arrived at the Black Sea. He died on his way there. But neither his banishment nor his death disapproved his or diminished his claims and his faith in his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Matthew Henry wrote that grace which was sufficient for them to carry them through the sufferings shall not be deficient in you. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For the last several weeks, we've been looking at the Beatitudes that Jesus looked and gave each one of us. Could be said the attitudes of our lives and how we deal with our lives today. We have seen how each one builds upon another as we progress through. Without fail, every time Christ asks us to give up something, he gives us a promise of something more and greater continuously in our lives. It is true we can look at the list of Beatitudes and feel overwhelmed and feel that we cannot measure up and it is impossible for us to do it on our own. However, if we do remember that Christ has promised to always be with us, to never leave us, to never leave us alone, to always be present, we can be successful for him. What have we learned? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Spiritual poverty in complete need of our lives for Christ. I need him in all and everything I do. Blessed are they that mourn. Be mournful over our sinful conditions, recognizing that we have a need. We cannot do it without our Savior, and so we mourn over those things. Blessed are the meek, being humbled before God, acknowledging his greatness and his power in his life, and the ability and the things he wants to do for us. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Are you hungry and thirsting for God's righteousness and truth? Do you hunger and thirst for it more than the things of this earth? Do you seek his word daily? Do you seek his relationship daily in prayer and thanksgiving and request? Blessed are the merciful. Are we having mercy on those that are less fortunate than us and give a helping hand to those around us? Blessed are the pure in heart. Do we have that inner purity? We look good on the outside. I look out upon you guys today and everyone here. You look good. You're clean. You're good clothes on. Everything looks awesome. But God looks past that suit. He looks past that dress, that tie, whatever is there. And he looks at our heart and he says, that's what I want, pure. Outward stuff, yeah, you look good. But I really want the inward heart to be pure before me. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
Do we make peace in this world or do we make unrest? What is our goal in life? To be the soothing presence of Jesus Christ has called us to be or to cause trouble wherever we may go. And blessed are the persecuted. There is honor in persecution when we're persecuted for Jesus Christ. Not that we get proud and let pride overtake our lives when we feel persecution. No, we never want that to happen, but we are there. What is reward for living this life for Christ and accepting these attitudes and beatitudes? Heaven, comfort, being full, given mercy, seeing God, being called the sons of God, entering the kingdom of heaven, and the great reward he has promised us there. When I look at that list, I don't know about you, I think of the persecution that I have felt in my life at this point and the persecution that I know the Bible tells that Jesus' followers will have even more and more as he come near his return. And I think that is worth it, don't you? Everything that he asks us to do, though it may come with trial, tribulation, struggle, embarrassment sometimes, comes with a greater reward when he returns. It's a choice we have to make. I pray that your choice is, God, I will follow you. I will do all that you ask me to do each and every day in every way. Father, we come to you today when we, we, as we looked at this list of beatitudes that you've challenged each of us to accept and to live in our lives. We see them as challenges, mountains to climb, victories to have. But we, with each one of them are the promises of you, the promises of, of heaven, the promises of eternal life when you return. Father, I pray that each one of us, as we look at these Beatitudes, we accept the challenge as we readily and willingly want to accept the rewards that come with it. We ask things in your name. Amen.